I became a chemist at the age of eight. I thought it would be so cool to know things and discover things like a scientist. So I had my dad help me move a few storage boxes around in our garage to make a little room for a secret laboratory. And unfortunately, my mom was too afraid to let me use any chemicals more dangerous or exotic than baking soda and vinegar. So pretty much the most exciting thing I could do was make bubbles. But um, so instead of doing really big, great discoveries in that lab, I would go in, I would sit at my little desk, and I would just think and dream of what I would do someday when I had the knowledge and resources to make great discoveries and do great things. I printed out a periodic table, and I taped it to a storage box right next to my lab desk. And I would stare at it, and I wish that I could make some sense of it and just understand what it meant, because I knew that scientists could look at this table, just this jumble of letters and numbers, and they could pull off all this information, they could do science, they could do chemistry, just by looking at this thing. But I had no idea what it meant, and that frustrated me so much. But now that I've finally taken some classes, read some books, some articles, done some exploring on my own, I think I finally know what chemistry is all about. And I'm here today because I want all of you to see chemistry the way I do. And I love chemistry because I think it's so fun to be able to piece together facts and theories to explain why something's happening in real life. So I'm going to share with you the stories behind four of the most deadly elements on the periodic table. I don't think this is cool just because these elements are deadly. Everybody knows that some things in chemistry aren't that good for you. But what makes this so exciting to me is that I understand, and I'm going to share with you, how and why these elements actually have the potential to kill. I think it's fine to know that something just is, but it's always so much more fun to know the story behind it. So this first element is probably something that most of you have heard of. Um, what's the deal with arsenic? Well, one major theme of chemistry is that the columns on the periodic table contain elements with similar properties. And this isn't just coincidental. It has to do with the fact that the columns on the periodic table represent numbers of outer electrons. And these outer electrons are what power reactions. That's what makes reactions happen. So it makes sense that if two elements have the same number of outer electrons or in the same column, they will react similarly. So we, call, we say they have similar chemical properties. So I'd like you to notice on this periodic table here that arsenic is directly beneath phosphorus. Keep that in mind. So they have similar chemical properties. Now, anyone remotely familiar with biology should know that one of the most important molecules in not just human cells, but any living cell, is ATP. ATP is absolutely essential for running cellular processes, mechanisms, reactions, almost everything. It provides energy. Um, and ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. It contains phosphorus. So get this. When arsenic gets into your cells, it is so chemically similar to phosphorus. Remember its location on the periodic table. It's so chemically similar to phosphorus that your body will actually try to package it into ATP. And of course, this doesn't work because as chemically similar as arsenic is to phosphorus, it's not exactly the same. So ATP production is going to get completely messed up, which means the cell can't do anything. The cell is screwed. Chemistry just got real. So a lot of people don't know that arsenic used to be used in a paint called Paris Green. And this paint color was really popular in the early 1800s. People would love to paint clothing with it and accessories, especially walls in their house. And actually, this wasn't really harmful when the paint was dry. But sometimes on wet and humid days, arsenic would actually come off the wall as vapor. And people would breathe it in and get sick and even die. So a lot of times in those days, country, or doctors would recommend for people to go out to the country um, to get the nice country air to make them feel better. And actually, people would get better often, but this wasn't because of the magic of the country air. It was because the country air was warm and dry, so any arsenic paint on the wall would stay on the wall and not come off as vapor, so people's health would improve. Uh, the next element I'd like to introduce is mercury, and I'll start with a quick story. Um, so in 1989, a, a man in Michigan began to steal dental fillings from a company where he worked. And these dental fillings were made of an alloy of silver and mercury. 
And so this guy wanted the dental fillings, obviously, for the silver. So he would collect them and bring them down into his basement of his house and heat them up until the mercury boiled off his vapor and he'd be left with the silver. So it seems like a good deal, right? Um, but not really, because he apparently just thought the mercury disappeared, but it doesn't disappear. It was actually circulating through his house, and mercury vapor is extremely toxic. So one morning, he and his entire family were found dead, all because he wanted a little extra cash. Now, mercury vapor is so dangerous because it can be inhaled and absorbed directly into your bloodstream via your lungs. In your blood, mercury reacts with hydrogen peroxide, which is a natural waste product of, uh, of just your cells. And when it reacts with hydrogen peroxide, it forms a mercury ion. And this mercury ion has a very high affinity, is very reactive with selenium compounds. Selenium is an element that's found in several enzymes that are involved in helping antioxidants do their job. So they really keep up the quality of your cells. So mercury will come into contact with these selenoenzymes and permanently destroy them completely. So they can't work again. And a lot of selenoenzymes are located in your brain and brain cells are very high in selenoenzymes. So that's why mercury poisoning is so associated with brain damage, because mercury is going to have the most effect where there's the most selenoenzymes, which is your brain cells. This next element is a little more obscure than the others have been. Most people have never heard of strontium, much less that it's a deadly element. And actually, not all, of, not all strontium is dangerous. It's only that some of it is radioactive. The radioactive isotope of strontium is strontium-90, uh, which means there's a combined total of 90 protons and neutrons in the nucleus. Uh, this, so strontium, when it's absorbed into, when it gets into your body, it cannot be flushed out like most unneeded substances will, because if you look at strontium's location on the periodic table, it's directly beneath calcium. And hopefully all of you should know, calcium is stored in your body, in your bones, and in your teeth, so your body will recognize strontium as calcium and deposit it in your bones. So this actually isn't an issue when you have the non-radioactive strontium. It's just not needed. It's just stored in your bones. But when you have the radioactive strontium that's deposited in your bones or in your teeth, this is a major issue because then you've got these radioactive strontium atoms shooting all of the surrounding tissue with beta particles. Uh, beta particles, beta radiation, occurs when a neutron, a neutral particle in the nucleus, suddenly breaks into a positively charged proton, a negatively charged electron, and an antineutrino. The antineutrino is not important, so forget about that. But the, the proton will stay in the nucleus, but the electron will shoot out with a high amount of energy. And this energetic, energetic electron is called the beta particle. And since beta particles are so high in energy, they have very high ionizing power and they can interact with DNA and cause radiation sickness and even cancer. And the last element is definitely the one that scares me the most. Thallium forms compounds that are, when dissolved in water, are colorless, odorless, and tasteless. And thallium can be absorbed into your body just by direct contact with the skin. So it's extremely effective as a poison, don't get any ideas. But Saddam Hussein actually used thallium to poison people he considered rivals and political threats. So this is really, this is a pretty terrifying element. Um, so when thallium gets into your body, it moves quickly through your body by moving along nerve pathways. And this is because thallium acts like potassium. And actually, thallium isn't even in the same column as potassium on the periodic table. They're on completely different sides, but just by coincidence, their ionic radii are very similar. So they're about the same size, and so the body doesn't distinguish between them because all potassium does is move across membranes, creating a difference in electric potential, which is important in nerve cells. So potassium is very concentrated all around nerve cells, and this is how thallium will move through your body, acting like potassium. And again, as similar as thallium is to potassium, it's not the same because thallium is very reactive with sulfur compounds. And many sulfur-containing proteins are essential to cellular respiration. And so, just like mercury and selenoenzymes, thallium will come into contact with the sulfur-containing proteins, destroy them, and really mess up the cell. And since thallium is so concentrated around nerve cells, acting like potassium, thallium poisoning, one major symptom of thallium poisoning is nerve damage, and sometimes victims will experience a sensation of walking on hot coals. So I just think this stuff is 
awesome. I love talking about this. I love sharing it with people. Um, I could tell you, I could talk for 30 more minutes. Unfortunately, I only have about one more minute. But um, if you want to find me after, I would be so happy to tell you stories of 114 other elements. Um, but uh, I really recommend that you go out there and find some books, maybe not on chemistry, but on whatever you're interested in, and really do some research, because it's so fun to dig into this sort of stuff. Um, so I'm, I hope that you've all enjoyed getting to learn about a few of the deadliest elements on the periodic table. Um, <laughs> I hope I didn't scare anybody. I won't. The food is OK if, there's, if you eat anything here. Um, but I, I, I'm glad I've been able to share this with you. And I know that chemistry isn't for everyone, but I believe that curiosity is. Thank you.